Um, so most people are aware of Dawson's fingers that we see in patients with demyelination and other conditions. So this was actually first described by a Scottish pathologist called James Walker Dawson um, in his publication, The Histology of Disseminated Sclerosis. Um, so that was a histology based one rather than this is obviously substantially previous to any imaging. And um, so he looked at the distribution and the stages of lesions in histology um, of what was then called disseminated sclerosis. And, and he described um, noting wedge shaped areas with broad base to the ventricle and extensions into adjoining tissue in the form of finger like process or in pulley, in each of which a central vessel could usually be found. Um, but so it wasn't actually Dawson himself who named this sign. Um, it wasn't until 1955 when the term Dawson's fingers was used by Charles London. Um, and uh, so rather than naming it after himself, it was someone else who named it for him. So the features that you see, you get the, the it's periventricular demyelinating plaques and they're perpendicular to the ventricles. And the reason that they're perpendicular is that's the orientation of blood vessels. Um, so it's thought that there's inflammation around these blood vessels and that's why you get the lesions in that area. And um, so we we won't really be seeing them on pathology, but we see them frequently on MRI. Um, and in T1, chronic lesions are low signal, but they're often isodense. Um, and then in T2 flare is what we're used to looking at. So they're high signal and they're usually a linear or an ovoid type. Um, in gadolinium enhanced T1, um, if the lesion is an active lesion, and it, it will enhance and that can help us monitor and um, the stages or activity of diseases. And um, so how relevant is this actually clinically? So when these relations were first described, it's thought to be specific to multiple sclerosis. But now that we know, know much more about the other mimics um, and got more advanced imaging, that's not the case. So these are also seen in um, patients with animal spectrum disorder including both with anti apoporin 4 and anti-MOG antibodies, although they are less frequent. Uh, there's been some studies, some very small scale studies using seven Tesla MRI that are better been able to differentiate between MS and animal spectrum disease dis um, based on the distribution of the lesions and the relation to blood vessels, um, but they're very small numbers. Um, and one of the problems with that, there's not actually a clear definition of what counts as a Dawson's finger or not. It's um, There's not any size limits. And so it's up to the, um, the people involved in the study as to what they chose as a baseline. And um, it's also seen in non demyelinating lesion diseases. I'm sure we've all had the report that comes back from MR of can't exclude demyelination. And then you find out the patient's got every vascular risk factor um, under the sun. So it is seen in patients with small vessel disease particularly they've also got diabetes. So this scan on the left, that's actually a patient who's got small vessel disease and diabetes, but you wouldn't get that could, could look um, like a so-called Dawson's finger compared to the patient on the other side, which is a patient with diagnosis of MS. So as my so take home from this was that it's an interesting sign and it can be useful, but it's not something to be taken in isolation because it's fairly defined and it's really needs to be taken into consideration with the other scan findings in the patient's history um, and other tests. Thank you.